In this video, we're going to cover the nephron. The nephron is the functional unit of the kidney, and in adults, each kidney consists of about 1 million nephrons. In this diagram, you can see the different components of the nephron. It starts with the renal corpuscle, which consists of the Bowman's capsule and the glomerulus. We then have the proximal convoluted tubule, the loop of Henle, which has both a descending portion and an ascending portion, the distal convoluted tubule, and the collecting duct. In this video, we're going to look at how each component of the nephron is involved in the production of urine. We'll start with the Bowman's capsule, where glomerular filtration occurs. Inside the Bowman's capsule are the glomerular capillaries. Capillaries, you'll recall, are the site of nutrient and waste exchange. And due to the high hydrostatic pressure of the fluid in the glomerular capillaries, and the low solute concentration in the Bowman space, fluid gets forced across the glomerulus into the renal tubule to form what is called ultrafiltrate. Ultrafiltrate consists of water and small solutes. This means that there are no proteins or blood cells in the ultrafiltrate. There are some situations where there are proteins in blood, but those occur when there is kidney damage. So under normal conditions, the ultrafiltrate does not contain proteins or blood cells. The next step is for the filtrate to pass into the proximal convoluted tubule where bulk reabsorption occurs. It's called bulk reabsorption because it is not under hormonal control and because 70% of the fluid and solutes that originally got filtered across the glomerular capillaries into the renal tubule actually gets reabsorbed. And the purpose of this is actually to reabsorb a lot of the solutes that we want to keep in the body. So this includes almost all of the glucose and amino acids that got filtered in the first place. Next, we have the loop of Henle. The loop of Henle first has the descending portion. In the descending portion of the loop of Henle, the renal tubule has high water permeability and low salt permeability. Since the concentration of the kidneys essentially increases from the cortex to the medulla, that means as fluid passes down the descending limb of the loop of Henle, the solute concentration increases. As the solute concentration increases going down, water is going to move out of the loop of Henle. This essentially concentrates the solution in the renal tubule. Next, we have the ascending part of the loop of Henle. The ascending part of the loop of Henle can actually be separated into the thin ascending limb and the thick ascending limb. In the thin ascending limb, there is water impermeable and has high salt permeability. So now, as the renal tubule is starting to move up with the ascending loop of Henle, solute concentrations are decreasing. And as solute concentrations decrease, salt is going to move out of the renal tubule. In the thick ascending limb, it's similar to the thin ascending limb in that it's also water impermeable. And the difference is that instead of having salts move out just naturally by diffusing down their concentration gradients, there is an active transport protein going on, the sodium potassium 2 chloride cotransporter. This is a protein that pumps all three ions out of the renal tubule. So it has a similar effect as the thin ascending limb, except instead of having a passive diffusion of solutes out of the renal tubule, here it's an active transport of solutes out of the renal tubule. Next, we have the distal convoluted tubule where regulated reabsorption occurs. It's called regulated reabsorption because this is where the hormones that affect the composition of urine act. So we have aldosterone. So aldosterone increases sodium reabsorption. And this is often not mentioned, but aldosterone acts by increasing the activity of the sodium potassium pump. So if you're increasing sodium reabsorption, that means at the same time, you're also increasing the secretion of potassium in the urine. This is also where parathyroid hormone, PTH, acts to increase calcium reabsorption in the kidneys. Finally, we have the collecting ducts. At the collecting ducts, this is where ADH, antidiuretic hormone, or vasopressin acts. 
ADH will increase the production of aquaporins, which are water channels. These proteins allow for water reabsorption. So essentially, ADH increases water reabsorption at the collecting ducts.